we do have far more control over our levels of happiness than we might think. There are things that we can do that can allow us to so-called synthesize happiness. I want to point out at the outset that synthetic happiness, while it might sound synthetic, aka false, it's anything but. It actually turns out to be among the more and perhaps the more potent form of happiness that we can all access. What increases our levels of happiness? Our anticipation of something positive oftentimes leads to greater increases in the sorts of neurochemicals that support a state of happiness and well-being than the actual acquisition of the thing that we're trying to obtain. Critical value of getting regular bright light, ideally sunlight in your eyes within the first hour of waking, or if the sun isn't out when you wake up in the morning, to turn on a lot of bright artificial lights and then get sunlight in your eyes for anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on how cloudy it is, in the early part of the day. Absolutely outsized effects on mood and focus during the day and quality of sleep at night. How certain patterns of music can induce a state of joy and joyful anticipation in particular. Something called pro-social spending. The point is that giving resources, certainly in the form of money, but also in the form of effort and time, is immensely beneficial for synthesizing our own happiness. That is for the giver, us, to increase our levels of happiness. The ability to refocus again and again and again on what we're doing throughout our day, regardless of what we're doing, can have a very dramatic, in fact, a statistically significant increase on our levels of overall happiness. The practice that's known to be beneficial for increasing our ability to focus is among other things, a short meditation practice, even a very brief meditation of about 13 minutes. And this would be the sort of quote unquote classic type of meditation done consistently. That sort of meditation can greatly enhance one's ability to focus. Quality social connection is extremely powerful in terms of its ability to increase our levels of happiness. This can be romantic connection. This can be friendship. This can even be coworker or just daily superficial interaction type connections. Physical contact is also important for social connection and not just romantic or sexual type connection. Allo grooming is a pattern of behavior that's observed in essentially all mammals, but very strongly in non-human primates and primates where individuals within a species touch one another, and this is non-sexual touch. So this would be um, someone brushing somebody else's hair or combing their hair, or even using a lint roller on them, for instance, or um, someone grooming somebody else. Now, typically one needs to have an established relationship with this person. So it could be a professional type relationship where this is a barber cutting somebody's hair or a hairdresser um, cutting some uh, or styling somebody's hair. It could be somebody giving someone a manicure or a pedicure. It could be somebody doing skincare or massage for somebody in a, in a professional context, or it could be two people who have agreed that it is appropriate for the context and for the relationship for one person to be grooming somebody else. And this is consensual touch that's very context appropriate, but it's known to increase levels of oxytocin, a kind of hormone slash neurotransmitter, it's both really, um, that is known to evoke feelings of, bo of bond or of, of feeling bonded to somebody or something. Allo grooming is a pro-social behavior that tends to associate with and promote feelings of well-being and happiness. 